profitable for us to know Christ, to engage in those. And it's profitable for those who don't know Christ that we engage in those so they can hear the good news. It's the only thing that works. Godly people taking the message of God to people who are ungodly like we used to be so they can come like we are now if we're pursuing God and the godliness that He provides. Is that who you are today? Are you pursuing the godliness of the Father? Are you pursuing your own adventures? I met a man the other day and asked him, he says, he says, my, I have Jewish roots. He says, my dad was Catholic. My mother raised me Southern Baptist. I said, do you go to church? Where do you go to church? He says, well, I don't. He says, my son, our children are involved in uh, travel sports. Excuse me? You want your kid to be more in sports than taking him to church? There's an issue there with you, sir. That was said with gentleness, by the way. And I said, do, do you know what you just said? You care more about your kid being involved in sports than in things of God? You know, he can play during the regular seasons and, you know, the enemy's just giving you a way to keep your children out of church. Do you hear what I'm saying? You know, when I get up, I get up at 6.30 on Sunday morning. I get ready, and I go down on your Boulevard, and there's this uh, Rotary ballpark or Sifton ballpark right there on the right as I'm going down the road. You know, those gates are already open, and that place is filling up with cars, and all they're doing is worshiping the God of sports. And those kids are going to miss out because their kids want them to, their parents want their kids to excel in sports instead of become valuable children in the kingdom of God. I tell you, Satan will give you a lot of ways to keep kids out of church. That's why we love to do vacation Bible school because we can get them in here and we can plant the seed. That's why we love Pam being here and teaching the children why so we can help them succeed. We need that. Amen. And if we'll make sure that we pursue the godliness of God, those children will see God in us. Yeah. They're going to want what we have. Yeah. So we have a, a need to engage in good deeds toward these children. Why? Because the Bible says it's good and it's profitable. It's the only thing that works is us doing good deeds, showing the glory of God. Amen? Yeah. And it says, in opposition to that, or in place of that, but shun. Don't do it. Shun's a pretty intensive word. Don't let it happen. Shun foolish controversies and gene genealogies. Strife and disputes about the law. For they're unprofitable and worthless. Reject the factious man after a first or second warning. Knowing that such a man is perverted. And is sinning, being self-condemned. You know, if your heart is to create strife, be contentious, put yourself involved in the foolishness of the world, you're going to miss the godliness that the scripture has called us to today. You're going to miss the ability to hear the clear voice of God. You're going to miss the heart of God to share with the world, with the world that needs him so much. It tells you what you need to do. It tells you what you don't need to do. As Saul, he was doing what he didn't need to do. As Paul, as God began to speak to him and call him out, he began to do what he needed to do to honor the Heavenly Father. My question, are you living your life doing what you need to do to honor the Heavenly Father? My heart is that you receive this message. And with every ounce of strength and thought of mind, you will determine today to pursue the godliness of the Father who is our God. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, your word is very challenging to us. 
And I know as we, as a congregation, pursue godliness, the enemy is going to try to come against us even stronger. But God, I rejoice again that greater that's in us is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. And so help us be those people who malign no one. Uh, we're not contentious. We're uncontentious. And we engage in good deeds. Because your love, though we didn't deserve it, was richly poured out on us in Jesus Christ. We thank you for that. Now let us live knowing that we have the richness of God through Jesus in our life. And let, we, let us as individuals and as a congregation pursue the godliness of you, our Heavenly Father. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.